Well, hello, hello, and welcome everybody to our Ash Wednesday Mass. I want to remind all of you to get your ash in church today because we have prepared these wonderful uh, packets for Ash Wednesday, which include the ashes, the blessed and exercised ashes, and a little blessed and exercised salt, and some blessed and exercised holy water, and some blessed and exercised holy oil, and some blessed and exercised incense that I brought back from Poland in my eight suitcases. Can you imagine me traveling from Poland with eight, <laughs> eight suitcases full of uh, incense? from a monastery that I went to where the monks exercised the incense which gets rid of evil spirits and the diabolical influence that pervades our life in so many ways. Many of you may hear voices or may see things at home or may have bad dreams or uh, things happen or there are bad vibes that people bring on to you. The Bible calls us in the book of Tobit when Sarah had the devil perturbing her and evil spirits after her and they would not allow her to be married each time that she had a husband and she was married seven times and each of the seven husbands uh, died a very tragic death, the Bible tells us, at the moment when um, Sarah would be in the conjugal act in the bedroom with her new husband, the devil would come and the man would be killed. And so God calls uh, Tobias uh, in the book of Tobit to use incense which he made from the insides of a fish in order to get rid of the devil and the evil spirits from Sarah's life. And when they burned the incense, the Bible says the devil fled because that's what the devil does each time we use blessed and exercised items. That's why I go all around my house everywhere because there's all sorts of evil spirits everywhere. And I spread holy and exercised water and I spread the holy and blessed salt exercise salt all around my house everywhere and every day I place the blessed and exercised oil on myself to have the protection of the Lord in my life. This is very, very important. And so I invite all of you, I wrote a letter explaining how to place the ashes on yourself for Ash Wednesday. That's why, you know, um, get your ashes in church on Ash Wednesday so you can pick up your packet with the blessed ashes and you pray together. Uh, because of the pandemic, I cannot place the ashes on you, so you can place them yourselves. Mix them with a little bit of the uh, blessed and exercised water. Okay? Actually, maybe... Instead of spraying it like that, put some of it in, okay? That's good. And a little bit of the oil. There. And a little bit of the salt. See, we make it super, super powerful. Blessed and exercise salt to get rid of the devil and all the diabolical forces that are after us. And then... Use your finger and place some of the blessed ashes on yourself or on your family members and say those words. Remember that you are dust 
and to dust you shall return, or you can say, repent and believe in the gospel. There. So happy Lent to everybody, to all of you. I'm praying that you have a blessed and happy Lent with the joy of the Lord as our strength. Let's begin Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You are merciful to all, O Lord, and despise nothing that you have made. You overlook people's sins to bring them to repentance, and you spare them, for you are the Lord our God. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, that's why we need all of this, because we, our battles are against the spirits, the evil spirits that want to perturb us and rob us of peace and take away the hope and the joy of the gospel in our lives. We may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. We are arming ourselves with weapons. The ashes, the oil, the blessed and exercised oil, the blessed and exercised holy water and salt, oh, and our faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm inviting all of you this Lent to with me. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading it all for the joy of the Lord. Let's trade it all. All that we are going through. Let's trade this pandemic for the joy of the Lord. For the sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning, the Bible says. And that's what I'm praying for all of us. Let's listen to our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast, let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why? Should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be, Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. 
O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. May the words of the Gospel, the good news, penetrate my mind, be always on my lips, and enter and remain always in my heart. Jesus said to his disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you. They have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your almsgiving may be in secret and your Father who sees in secret will repay you in secret. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, but anoint your head and perfume yourself. Oil was a way to perfume yourself. In other words, look good. Don't look all sad. Don't have a vinegar face or a funeral face, or a fart face. Have a happy face, a joy-filled face, for the joy of the Lord should be our strength, the joy of the gospel, the fact that Jesus has come back for us, the fact that God is with us, that we are not alone, and that nothing is impossible for God that all will be well, that this pandemic is ending, the vaccine is here, people are being vaccinated. We are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Where is your joy? Trade in during this Lent, this 40 days of change, where God wants us to change our mentality, our way of seeing our life. Trade in your sorrow, your gloomy face, 
trade in your sickness, trade in your problems, trade in your suffering, trade it all in for the joy of the Lord. That's what I'm praying will happen to me during these 40 days. When I hear, repent and believe in the gospel, as Jesus said, repent and believe in the good news. That's Mark 1.15 when Jesus says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Now, in the Greek, because the New Testament is written in Greek, Jesus said, Do metanoia and believe the good news. Repent is a bad translation here in English because when we hear this in English, we think that we have done something wrong and that we have to feel sorry about this and come back from it. I want us this Lent to repent from repenting. Okay? Let's repent from repenting. From this word, repent. Because what Jesus wants us to do is to change our mind. Not to feel sorry for ourselves and be all down, but to put on the meta mind. The word metanoia here, which is the word conversion, which is what we want to happen during the 40 days of Lent. The word metanoia, the second part, noia is from nous in Greek, which means our mind. And meta has to do with the above, something above, beyond. In other words, conversion happens when you have an above mentality. We see this a lot in, in, in English when we talk about like a meta-narrative or a, that's the above narrative, or a metaphysics. So the beyond, the above physics, beyond physics. Well, we as Christians are called to a meta nous, a metanoia, an above mind, to think with our above mind. And metanoia is the antith antithesis. I have a hard time saying that in English, you know. Antith antithesis, antithesis the, an the antithesis. <laughs> okay? The, the, the opposite, the opposite of metanoia is paranoia in Greek, paranoia, when you are paranoid, and para, the, the, the first part of that word, paranoia, para, has to do with something below, the under. In other words, when you are paranoid, when you are fear-filled, you live the undermind. You live in the underworld. And who lives in the underworld? The devil and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls, the Bible says in the first letter of Peter. The devil, your opponent, is prowling around like a roaring lion. I just prayed that last night, a night prayer. Tuesday evening, every Tuesday night before I go to bed, I pray that from the first letter of Peter, reminding me that my opponent, my accuser, the one who brings me down, the one who wants me to live the paranoia and not the metanoia, he is after me to bring me down to his level, his level of fear where I am afraid. That's why Jesus says, be not afraid over and over. He says that to Mary. He says that to Joseph. He says that to Paul, the 12 apostles. Be not afraid, but come and follow me and have the joy of the gospel in you. Jesus says, 
metanoia, do metanoia and believe in the gospel. Believe in the good news that I am with you and if I am with you, no one can be against you. That nothing is impossible for me to do in your life. That's what we are hoping to achieve during this 40 days of change in our life when we hear on Ash Wednesday that we are dust. And to dust we shall return. What is that phrase? That is from the book of Genesis. When Adam and Eve are leaving paradise, are leaving heaven, God says to them, remember where you come from. You have come from this terrain. In other words, you have come from heaven. You are from heaven, and to heaven you shall return. Adam and Eve, this exile does not last forever. It is temporary. Your problem does not last forever. This pandemic, my dear brothers and sisters, does not last forever. It is temporary. We are coming back. Your suffering doesn't last forever. The night does not last forever. Joy comes in the morning. Woo! Joy comes in the morning. And that joy is what we want to recover during these 40 days. So let's repent of repentance. When you feel sorry for yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Life is beautiful because life is meant to be lived. And when it is lived with God, you walk by faith and not by sight. And when you walk by faith, you see the above, not the below. That's what we are called to do. Have the reversal of paranoia that the world fills you with. Because you know, I can't, I, uh, the, the economy, the politics, that all fills you with a lot of paranoia. The addictions, it gets you all depressed. And anxiety, that's why we have such problems right now with that around. And God wants you to have the metanoia. To start believing that you can trust and believe the good news. You see, it's your choice. I got a question for you all during this 40 days. You're going to live the metanoia life or the paranoia life? Which life do you want to live? I'm living the life of metanoia, where I'm coming back to my senses, that I am made from the dust of paradise, and to that dust you shall return. And when you read the original Hebrew, that's what it says in the book of Genesis. God says to Adam, listen, you come from here. You come from this terrain, from this soil, from this world. You have come from heaven, and to heaven you will return. And then what happened? I'm speaking. What happened? The new Adam showed up. And who's the new Adam, the Bible tells us? Jesus Christ, who has come back. The people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. And to the people who lived in darkness, the darkness of the world, the paranoia of the world, the new light appeared. Jesus Christ, who didn't come to bring us to heaven. But this Jesus came to bring heaven to us. And what did he say? Do metanoia. Change your way of thinking. Because the kingdom of heaven is within you. Joy is within you. Happiness is within you. Do that. It's a choice. Are you expecting to live heaven after you die? And so that's why you, you're going to live a sorry life now? 
Stop it. These 40 days are there for you to see how you are going to bring the metanoia to your life. The change that God wants you to have. The transformation that God wants to happen in your life. Jesus wants you to be transformed. Transformed in your thinking. You know, this word metanoia is linguistically in English connected to the word metamorpho. Metamorpho, which is where we get metamorphosis. And that's the word that is used in the New Testament Greek when we refer to Jesus' transfiguration. So when we hear Jesus say repent, maybe we'd better be off in our life envisioning ourselves on the mountaintop. Transfigured, which is transformed alongside Jesus. Change! From the small mind to the big mind. Get out of your paranous and into your metanous. Jesus is saying today, be transformed for the kingdom of God is within you. You just got to discover it. You've been baptized. Be transformed by God's love. These ashes signify that on our forehead, that we come from dust and we are headed to that dust. But not like, you know, I'm headed to that dust, which is paradise, which is heaven. I, it's not like I'm headed there after I die to my physical body. No, I'm supposed to be there. I'm on a journey of 40 days to get to where? To the joy of Easter. The journey to come back to myself, to discover that God, that hope, that love is within me. These ashes are supposed to wash us clean. Wash us clean of all that is not allowing us to live that life of metanoia, of joy that Jesus wants us to have. So be washed clean of your worry, of your fear. That's, you know, I remember my, my grandmother, she had a, a number of silver pieces in, in, in her house, passed down from, from one generation to the next. And she's got different, like, kind of silver things. And she used to wash the silver with ashes to clean the silver, precious metal. Well, the Bible tells us that we are like gold and silver in the sight of God. God wants to use these ashes to wash us clean. So whatever has dirtied us, God wants to wash clean. We do this by getting dirty. God wants to dirty you in order to clean you. Are you seeing this right now? Why, why, why ashes? For, because the goal of the Christian life and of Lent is to get us to realize that we all need to get dirty in order to get clean. Hmm? You got to do the dirty work. Jesus, in order, the Bible says today, in order to bring us salvation, He for our sake was made sin who did not know sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He had to get down and dirty in order to bring about the Easter joy. He had to get on the cross in order to experience the resurrection. You understand why? You have to, you have to uh, get dirty in order to... to to bring the metamorphosis, the transformation in your life, into the life of your family. Dirty in the sense that you need to do the dirty work of getting counseling for your marriage. If your marriage is on the rocks, it's going to be painful. 
There's going to be dying involved there. When you have surgery, it's painful, and the recovery part is painful too. You know, like the 40 days in the desert was, is a painful experience, but then the joy comes in the morning. But in order to arrive in your metanoia, you have to do the hard, dirty work. Put those ashes on, in other words, to bring health to your body. If you are addicted to alcohol or pornography or the casino or some other addiction like drugs or whatever or to shopping or to money or to your work because you're a workaholic, it's going to take some dirty work, getting dirty in order to change your way of thinking. If you're, if you're overweight, if you need to start an exercise program or if you need to go to Overeaters Anonymous or some other 12-step program, it's going to be dirty. It's going to be tough work, dying work. But unless you die, you cannot be born again. That's where conversion is all about, says Jesus. Unless you are born again, unless you die to your old self in order to be born to the new self, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it cannot spring up into a beautiful big tree blossoming into new life. You have to be willing to die to your old self to be born anew. That's why as Christians we have to be born again into a new life, a life in the Spirit. That takes work. Getting help means getting dirty it's going to be dirty you got to put the ashes on and you know and it, it a lot of us we don't like to get dirty you know we like to be clean we like the appearances you know we don't like that it's going to be dirty painful in other words work in order for you to find that partner that you have been looking for because you're lonely and you got to do something you know dating is not going to be all that great. I mean, you know, you, you're, there's going to be rejection in the process. Oh, yeah. You know, it's painful. Starting that online profile online, you know, that's, it's, it's not easy. Doing the dirty work, like confronting your past that you have had an abortion and going to a Rachel's Vineyard retreat. I participated in many of those retreats. Very painful. It's very hard for me many times to convince people to go on a retreat like that or some other retreat. But once they go through it, the healing that comes. But first you got to place those ashes and dirty yourself, you know, in it. Asking for forgiveness is dirty business. It's going to be painful to call that person you've wronged and ask for forgiveness. And they might even throw some feces on you. In the process, uh-huh, might be pain, it, uh, yeah, ain't easy. But God is asking you during these 40 days to do the tough work. You know what you need to do in order to arrive at the metanoia and get out of the paranoia. Confront that which is not allowing you to live the metanus and has you in the paranus. That's where the devil wants you. What kind of a life do you want in your life? You want the life of Jesus? The joy-filled life of the good news of the gospel? Or do you want the devil-infused life? In hell. How many people are in hell right now? And they're not doing anything to get out of that hell. Because you don't want to get dirty. Stop it. What is it that has you living in the small mind? Maybe you need to get out of that job. You're not happy there. Get out. Start in you. It's going to be painful. You're depressed and anxious. Well, you need to go see a doctor and get meds. Medicine is a gift from God. 
get counseling, get the help you need. There's all sorts of 12-step programs. You're lonely, do something about it. You got to do the work. It's not like, oh, the heaven will open and all of a sudden everything is going to just be nice and dandy. No, you got to do the work. These ashes on you are there to help you see that you are called to get dirty before you get clean. It's a process. Ashes are really the biblical way of getting clean, you know. But first, before you get clean, you got to get dirty. The book of Numbers says that those who are unclean must first have ashes put on them and be washed clean. In the Old Testament, we are told that. People were declared unclean. They felt unclean. Maybe you've experienced that in your own life because of the abuse you've suffered, the sexual abuse. You were touched inappropriately and that has made you feel dirty or that you were raped or that you were bullied in school and made fun of and called all sorts of name, names. You were belittled by your parents. You were told that you were a dummy, that you were good for nothing and you've internalized it. And you feel unclean, you feel ashamed because you're divorced or because you've had an abortion or you've did this sin or that sin. And you feel ashamed. Stop with the shame. Trade it in. Transformation is coming. But you got to do the dirty work in order to get cleaned inside. God cleans us. God wants us to be cleaned. And what cleans us? But the blood of Jesus, what can wash me clean but the blood of Jesus who died for all my sins and wants me to recognize that and accept his ever-flowing mercy and forgiveness that God died for me because he did not want to live without me and that there is no sin that God cannot forgive. God forgives, but you have to do the work of forgiving yourself and accepting that forgiveness. If you were a bad parent or all the mistakes you made, you have to accept that you are not a perfect being because God didn't make perfect beings, but you are a human being and you've made mistakes, but you are not a mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. You are a beautiful, chosen child of God, forgiven and called to live the life, the abundant life of Jesus Christ, who said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. And that's the life he wants you to have. It takes getting dirty to go to confession and confessing your sins. Traditionally, during Lent, we all go to confession and confess our sins. Do it! Have those ashes clean you. God wants to clean you, all of you. Why do we put him on our heads? Because when you're dirty and you get in the shower and you go under the, the, the shower head and it gets your head wet, it goes down your whole body. God wants to wash your whole self inside and outside to let you know how beautiful you are, how cherished you are, how wonderful you are, how loved you are, how wanted you are. Those mourning a loved one in the Bible put ashes on themselves to signify their mourning. Maybe you've lost a loved one. You have to do the hard work of mourning don't just sit there in your sorrow and grief. Mourn! But how do we mourn? The Bible tells us we don't mourn like the pagans do who have no hope because we live with hope and the hope of eternal life that my loved one hasn't died but just changed places. They went from an earthly existence to an eternal existence. They now are having the time of their life. That is what it means to live with hope. Stop being preoccupied in keeping yourself clean 
and staying away from the mess. Get messy, says Jesus, in order to get clean. Because those who want to save their life must first, I'm speaking right now, quoting the Bible, those who want to save their life, says Jesus, must first lose it and give it up. Because if you give it up for my sake, you will save it. Truly, truly, Jesus says, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it remains but a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. John 12, 24. We have to die to our selfish self, our worried self, our fear-filled self, our paranoia self, to be transformed, the metanoia, into our above, big mind, into our metanus, so as to no longer have us live, but as Paul says in the Bible, Christ to live in us and through us. So I pray this Lent, as we all get dirty, this Ash Wednesday, that we start doing the hard work today to arrive after this journey at our goal, metanoia, to be transformed, to do metanoia, to believe in the gospel, the good news, and to always remember where we come from, that we come from the dust, the terrain, the earth, the soil of paradise. And to that soil, to that dust, through the mercy and love of God, infinite mercy and love of God, to that dust, we shall, we are returning. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that mine and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, O Lord. And especially during this time, this holy time of Lent, our 40 days in the desert, when we journey with Jesus to arrive at the door of our metanoia, as we journey with Jesus to arrive in the metanus. For by his 
gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of our minds made pure, our minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and by participating in the mysteries, the holy mysteries by which we are all reborn, we may all be led to the fullness of grace that you have bestowed on us because we are your sons and daughters. And so as we thank you, we join the angels and all the saints as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, we pray, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving you thanks. He handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints, we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you forever through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And we stand and we pray using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Always grant us peace in our days, that helped by your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be with each of you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Have a happy, happy Lent. Remember, get out of your paranous, your paranoia mind, and get into your metanous, your metanoia, your above mind. That's what I'm praying for for each of you during this Lenten season because we are coming back. Soon and very soon. <laughs> so, have a Beautiful, beautiful Lenten celebration as we stand together and receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. And don't forget to come and get your holy packet with the blessed and exercised ashes for Ash Wednesday. God bless you. Get your ashes in church. You can get your ash in church on Ash Wednesday. 